apologize. I couldn't be here in person this morning, uh, this morning or I guess uh, afternoon uh, where, uh, where you all are. Uh, pleasure to be here uh, today uh, to talk a little bit about our company and the emerging legal marijuana industry. Uh, so Canada had a historic day last week. We were the first G7 country to legalize adult use marijuana. And that's opening up a whole host of opportunities in the consumer packaged goods space and the medical space. Hexo uh, has first and foremost been a medical marijuana company. We've been in business since August 2013, and we have just rejigged our business to really focus in on the adult use business. Uh, we focused in pretty hard on that for the last 12 months, and we're very pleased to say that we've been executing very well. The first days of legalization are showing incredible consumer demand, and uh, our teams are working around the clock to ensure that Canadians have access across the country to great Hexo products. Now, marijuana products is something that I want to talk about a little bit. And Hexo is a consumer packaged goods company. Although we started in the medical field, we believe that the large opportunity in cannabis and the opportunity that we will focus on is that of non-prescription channel goods. And that really includes anything uh, in channels that are retail stores, uh, or uh, pharmacies, but non-prescription. We believe that that's a more customer-centric approach, and we believe that, uh, that in that way, we're able to bring really innovative products to customers. So Hexo has had quite a bit of success over the years in introducing non-smoked forms of cannabis. So I'll go through uh, during the presentation and talk about our Elixir sublingual spray, our edible cannabis powders, and our partnership with Molten Coors, one of the largest beverage distributors across the world, in which we're planning on launching dealkalized beers, sparkling waters, kombuchas, and other exciting drinks with all sorts of powered by Hexo formulations. In terms of investment highlights, uh, Hexo uh, holds currently about 35% of the Quebec market in Canada. And the Quebec market represents uh, is the second most populous province. When we look at Canada as a whole, next year we're sitting anywhere between 12 and 15 percent market share. This provides a very interesting opportunity for investors because when we compare to other large players in the space, Canopy Growth Corp, for example, uh, we're sitting at about a third to a half of their market share. So I believe the, the numbers that uh, Bruce has been using is somewhere like 34%. What's interesting is we're currently trading uh, at about a tenth of the valuation. So there's an interesting uh, relative comp to look at there. Uh, another thing to note is that there are some near-term catalysts, like a listing in the New York Stock Exchange that's coming very soon, uh, which we're excited to be able to participate with a broader range of investors. We've uh, consistently been uh, very strong at operational scalability throughout the years. So from uh, our ability to charge more on a per gram basis, uh, so north of uh, $9.24 per gram, and our ability to control costs. So being able to, uh, to produce this product uh, as one of the leading low-cost producers in the country at about $0.88 cents per gram cash cost. Uh, although those are impressive feats, we believe that the industry is changing very fast. I believe on a macro level, the cultivation of this product will get commoditized. What's really important for Hexo is to move up the value chain and to be able to create innovative IP protected products in the beverage space, the cosmetic space, uh, and also the food space. Um, for that, we've established a model that we call the hub and spoke model. And at the core of that is that powered by Hexo promise in which we're able to deliver cannabis technology licensed cannabis infrastructure, distribution, and brands. And the goal is to be able to partner with different companies, Fortune 500 companies, in different food spaces and different roles. And we've started through a partnership with Molson Coors on the beverage side. And so what we've done with Molson is we've established a joint venture in which uh, Hexo receives 42.5% of the economics. So it was non-dilutive for investors. It's an exclusive deal around beverage where Olson Coors brings a whole host of base beverages to the table, while Hexo is bringing a host of cannabis experiences. When we think of cannabis, it's very important to look beyond the euphoria of THC, beyond the experience of getting high. It's important to look at cannabis as a host of experiences, which can include a calming effect. It can, can include diet uh, uses when we start to look at the use of the molecule CBG, for example, and it, everything in between. 
So what Hexo is focused on is creating these proprietary formulations and experiences that can be delivered in a tasteless, odorless, shelf-stable concept with a partner that brings exciting beverage bases and exciting brands like Molson Coors, but we're not stopping there. So with Molson, we're planning on doing a national rollout of drinks in Canada in October 2019, expected uh, legalization of edible. We're also beyond that international. Beyond the drink segment, though, we're looking at cosmetics, at other Fortune 500 partners there. We're looking at food, at both confectionery, baked goods, and also dairy. Uh, and, and eventually, we plan on also leveraging uh, partners in the food space, so specifically the e-cigarette market. Although we will be cautious as how we handle that, uh, given the reputational risk associated with tobacco. In terms of our Canadian market overview, Hexo is very well positioned. I've mentioned that we're capturing anywhere from 12 to 15 percent market share when we look at next year. Given the execution challenges around the, the giant demand that we're facing right now, Hex was performing admirably. Uh, the teams are executing very well, and we look forward to being able to, to share uh, initial sales numbers, which are very bullish, and we're excited to be able to, to put that out to the market. We are currently being distributed in all major markets in Canada, uh, so access to 80% uh, plus of the Canadian population. Core to that is our billion-dollar deal in the province of Quebec. So one of the things that Hexo was offering investors is revenue visibility. Uh, with a five-year deal with a take-or-pay feature, the only take-or-pay feature uh, in its existence in the cannabis industry for the first year, uh, we can provide some of the highest revenue certainty in an industry, which uh, is still rife with speculation. Who will be the winners? That's a, that's a big question. We, we know that there's a common thesis in cannabis today that five years from now, we will see Fortune 500 companies emerge out of this business. Uh, and I believe the Canadian firms, including Hexo, are ideally positioned to achieve that. Uh, by being able to show that revenue certainty, at least in Canada, we can give a good base from which to start to build DCF models uh, for investors so that you can come into our story. And then as we expand internationally, uh, we can go beyond that. In terms of infrastructure to be able to accomplish that, uh, in Canada, we're currently growing out of 310,000 square feet, producing 25 tons of cannabis a year. Uh, that number will increase significantly in December, so where we're onlining another million square feet of greenhouse uh, to go to 108 tons of production capacity annually. Now, that's both dry product and oils and extracted added value products, which are critical uh, to this new cannabis industry when you look at advanced products beyond dried. In terms of uh, innovation and our next products, I've mentioned a few exciting ones. That we, we've actually been uh, rewarded by um, the largest consumer group in Canada uh, around cannabis, uh, Lifco, and uh, last year when they did the best products in the industry, Hexo won both first and third prize. Uh, so for our Elixir sublingual spray, uh, which addresses one of the key challenges in cannabis. How do you move to a healthier option? How do you take away the smoke? But also, how do you retain that fast onset? This is going to be critical in the future, especially as we start to look at beverage. With Elixir, we've already solved one of those issues. Uh, so it's the fastest acting product on the legal market today. It's a sublingual spray. It's already reactivated. It goes under the tongue. And it also so solves the titration issue. So being able that every depression of the mechanism will give you about 2.5 milligrams of THC. So customers get a consistency experience, which we believe at Hexo is very important. We've also uh, taken first place in, that, in those Lyft Cannabis Awards with our Decar product, which is an edible cannabis powder, which is, again, solving that smoked product issue. We believe that over time uh, that the demand for cannabis products, advanced products that are not in smoke, will be about 70% of the total market demand. And so it's very important that we be a leader in that innovation, in the intellectual property, um, and the development of these products today. As we look to our distribution strategy, we started in Quebec. Today, we're Canada-wide. Um, Next year, we're starting to add international legs. So Hexo has actually announced a partnership with the Greek company. And the importance of Greece is in the fact that it gives a regulatory keyhole through passporting for Eurozone product approvals. 
Uh, Hexo is not focused, uh, unfortunately, on the German medical market, and I, I realize I'm presenting to a team of German investors today. Uh, we will leave that to some of our competitors. We are focused on the recreational adult use markets that we believe will open very shortly in the UK and France. And we believe that by having a partnership in Greece and existing installations in Eurozone countries, that, that will allow for passporting of our advanced products, and we will lever the distribution platform partners like Molson Coors that are the second largest distributor in the UK to achieve market dominance. We're doing all this from a very solid financial position. Exo is currently sitting on about a quarter billion dollars in cash. We are debt free and uh, we believe in that responsible growth. And as we start to hit the positive cash flow uh, shortly, uh, we believe we'll be able to reinvest that and continue to build our brand. All this has been possible uh, by having a great team uh, that we built this on, and I'm very uh, pleased every day to be able to interact with uh, an amazing board of directors uh, from people that sit on other boards of uh, Fortune 500 companies, from medical doctors to lawyers, uh, et cetera. Uh, and our operations team is very deep, uh, and so it's been a key part of our growth. Uh, we're currently sitting at about 300 employees, and we plan on being north of 800 employees by the end of the year. So a very uh, interesting growth story. I'd like to talk about our, our competitor comparison. I opened the conversation by stating that by market share, there's an arbitrage opportunity for investors to look at Hexo relative um, other valuations in the sector that have uh, that have other market share. What I'd like to point out is that we are in the top three next year. If you give full credit to every cannabis company in Canada today for the contracts that they have in place, uh, Hexo is top three. If you look at the production capacity, we're in that second top tier grouping. So you could see up on that slide there, right next to uh, Afria and Tilray, uh, kind of in a, in a major producer uh, and uh, in one of those top groupings. Now, the opportunity for investors is if you look at the market caps, there's a significant discount right now uh, at Hexo. And that's because I think our story has been relatively new. Uh, originally, uh, we uh, we were one of the later entrants into the market, so the 17th licensed producer. But we're very proud of our achievement to come up, and it looks like we will be third by sales next year. Uh, and our goal is to be top two in Canada and to take 2% worldwide market share. The opportunity here is as we open up our European market, as we start to use that same passporting idea and move into Latin America, and off the back of the Farm Act and the States Act in the U.S. as we enter the United States, we believe that it's possible for the next five years to take 2% or more market share. If we were to achieve that in a quarter trillion dollar market, Hexo would become itself a Fortune 500 company and join our partners in other verticals. That's the opportunity that's here today for you. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Again, it's a pleasure uh, to be able to uh, to be hosted at this conference, and I hope you enjoy yourself and you've learned a lot about our exciting industry. Um, I look forward to any questions you might have.